Howdy, y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this unboxing of Arkham Horror, the card game, the Innsmouth Conspiracy, a deluxe expansion. Arkham Horror, the card game, is a one to two player game for ages 14 up that takes about 60 to 120 minutes to play. This is a living card game. It is a cooperative game with variable player powers and deck construction. Howdy y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this unboxing of Arkham Horror, the card game, the new expansion, the Inns Mouth Conspiracy expansion. This is the base that you would need and then there'd be small, several smaller decks kind of about this size that you would mix in to continue your story. This is, uh, I think they call this the deluxe expansion for the Inns Mouth Conspiracy. As you see, it gives you some several cards and it does the nice thing that they always do with some nice things on the back of the box here to notice for Fantasy Flight slash Asmodee games is they always have for their LCGs this little scan bar thing usually. Uh, it lets you scan so you can see if there's actual stuff in there you want to add into your LCG or not. This is actually, if you scan that QR code, it's going to actually show you all the cards that are inside so you can know, like I said, if you want to add those in, if it's something you really want, or maybe you don't know if you actually have that in your game already and you may accidentally buy since there's so many different expansions out there accidentally buy one double you can scan and know already also another nice thing they do is it used to be the old fantasy flight ones but now game genix is coming out with a line that they do um, where it lets you know how many of a of the card sleeve packs you're going to need in order to sleeve up all the cards that are inside of your expansion so in this one it's telling you four grays which grays are the standard size card sleeves and yellow are the smaller USA size card sleeves. And this is saying how many packages you would have to buy. This is a nice little addition and we're actually trying to get some of the Game Genic line sleeves in so I can start showing them on video and showing off basically what you'd be looking for at your local game store. But as far as the grays go, the grays are just the standard size. You can use standard size Pokemon slash uh, magic size sleeves and they will fit them just fine. All right, so that's just showing you basic things on the back. Other than that, it's just gonna show the story that you're gonna be going through. And this, like I said, the deluxe expansion or the big box expansion are basically expansions to the core game, which you will need the core game in order to do. But this is just a way of basically expanding to it and you need this in order to continue on into the other smaller ones. And then this shows you all the game contents. You can see five investigator cards, which are the some of the standard size, the five mini cards of theirs, the 91 scenario cards, the 60 player cards, the 46 tokens, and one campaign guide. Really, I think the only small cards I can think of are the player cards, which are just the mini cards, and there's only five of them. So you might be able to just get one package of these yellows and use them for all of your uh, Arkham Horror, or you may have some left over from other games. We will see when we open this up. All right, let's get into it. All right, so this is everything I just now dumped out. Uh... All right, you can go ahead. This ain't gonna take me long. Oh, your card, yeah, give me a second. All right, so these got the little punch outs. Looks like they punch out pretty easily. double-sided, the things you're gonna need for this actual expansion. Then they have the campaign guide. And if this is your first deluxe thing, if you own the base game over the deluxe, this should look pretty, 
If you own any of the Arkham Horror Deluxes or the base game, this should look pretty standard. Uh, if you only own the base game, you'll notice this is a lot thicker, and it's because it's a little bit bigger of a campaign um, before you have to go into the little side ones. But other than that, this should be a pretty standard book. It's got the rules kind of right up here off the bat to let you know the new key components and stuff that are added in. And then it's got the campaign setup, which you kind of need so that you can know what level you're playing it at. It lets you know the expansion icon. And then you get right into the scenarios. I'm not going to show each of the scenarios, just kind of give you a quick glance. That way it doesn't spoil too much. That way you can go through the scenarios and kind of see. But you can see it's a pretty lengthy scenario and kind of depending on choices you make certain things will end out certain ways and then they have your investigator keep track of sheet and then all the let you know the other side things and then the backs just got the frequently asked questions which are always nice what's next let you know which uh, the ends about to go into next which is the end too deep and then encounter set icons All right, so these are only mini cards I could think of, and then it said only five mini cards, so this should be all you need for the base game, for the yellow sleeves. And it's just the character cards. I usually replace these with the actual investigators. I actually replace these with the actual investigators and just assume they're gonna have something that lets you kind of, like, you could just use to kind of re replace them in the stand as a standee or something. That way you're not just laying a card on another card. But these are only small ones I can think of, so getting a whole package just for five cards. But if you have several of the expansions, you're going to get more of these. So I guess it's worth having there or seeing if you have them from another game. Yeah, we'll start. We hit some that we already see some of. Oh well, I can't really see which order they're supposed to be in, kind of. But we shall see. All right, right off the bat, we have a treachery here. Which this is, I guess, part of this deck, actually. That probably would have made sense. So I'll just put these right here, because I'm pretty sure that means that goes there. And this looks like those, so... Maybe this was the way it was supposed to go. We will see. Alright. Alright, so right off the bat, it usually introduces characters. We already saw there's going to be five new characters, so here's the five characters. First one is Sister Mary here. Shows her stats. Shows her abilities. She's the nun. And then we get to see she's a guardian. It's probably going to be one of each class, I'm assuming. So we got the guardian here. Shows the deck size. Shows how her deck would be built. And then gives you a little bit of her story. And then here's Amanda Sharp, the student. Stats and ability. I can get that glare off of there. Sorry about that. Filming at the shop in a spot I normally do not film at too often. Here's all the stuff about her deck. Then we have Trish Scarborough. Recognize her from the old Arkham Horror game. Shows her stats and her ability. She is a spy. And then take a look at her deck and her little backstory. And then who they showed on the back. I recognize him from the old Arkham Horror games also. Dexter Drake, the magician. Here's his stats and his abilities. His deck what it includes and his little backstory. And then we have, yep, the sailor also from, I love it when I see these characters and recognize them. Silas Marsh, the sailor. 
Here's his stats and his abilities. I believe this one's called the Survivor. I always get those behind. There's his deck. His little backstory. Alright. And then we get into the actual Pit of Despair, which is a story that shows you what the tokens you pull out of the bag and what they do. This is the easy standard. And then the other side should be the hard expert. Then we get into the agendas. We have the awakening here. Oh, sorry. A little too close to the camera. Not doing the green screen this time. The green screen's been messing up for me lately. Need to find better lighting for it. Of course, I'm starting to get that bad shadow now because I'm used to using a green screen. Water rises. Agenda. Along with the high tide. In the back, we have a sacrifice for the deep agenda. Along of out of air. Then we got the pit, Act 1A. And recognition. And then we have the escape. From what I understand in the story on this, your investigators wake up and they do not have most of their memory. That's the reason it talks about you wake up in a pit and recognition. It's you trying to tr bring back your memories and then to the coast. So I guess you get out of the pit and head to the coast. All right, then we got the rooms as well, are the areas that you are gonna be moving around investigating in. We have the unfamiliar chamber, cave. And then the back of that. Then we have the tidal tunnel. Back of it, bone ridden pit. And we have another tidal tunnel here. Let's see if it's the same. Nope, fish graveyard. So you're just gonna be going down these tidal tunnels and run into random stuff. Fish graveyard there. Here's another tidal tunnel. Altar to Dagon. Good movie. Usually when we're playing this game, we'll put on Dagon or one of the other Cthulhu movies. Tidal tunnel. And we got the idol chamber. This one especially you would have to do Dagon. Tidal, tidal tunnel and sealed exit. Then the other part, the vanishing of Alina Harper. And there's her expert mode, or the expert mode of that story. Not her, the story's mode. And then we see the agendas for that one. Decrepit Decay. With Followed. And then Growing Suspicion. along with Driven Out. Then Frantic Pursuit. And Driven Out. Yeah, I'm getting a very much that Dagon feel. The Search for Agent Harper, Act 1A. And The Accusation. The Rescue. and found her. Finding Agent Harper is a new card. Looks like basically giving you ideas of where to look because it looks like you're doing a search. And we got the angry mob on the back. We have the Marsh Refinery. Fr 
front and back. Sorry, try to zoom that out a little bit. Gilman House. Back. Or actually, I think the other one's the front and the back, but either way, let you see both sides. Ends mouth square. Ends mouth square. Ends mouth harbor. Ends mouth harbor. First National Grocery. First National Grocery. Fish Street Bridge. Fish Street Bridge. The Little Bookshop. The Little Bookshop. Tidal Tunnel. Hey, more Tidal Tunnels. Underwater Cavern. Another Tidal Tunnel. Underwater Cavern. Tidal Tunnel. Tidal Pool. Tidal Tunnel. Tidal Pool. Tidal Tunnel. Underground River. Tidal Tunnel. Underground River. That's first pack. These other packs shouldn't take nearly as long. All right. Yep, it says I assumed. So there's those cards. And then... Let's see what this pack has in it. And these cards. Cool. We'll move on to these real fast. So these should be all just one-sided. So this is showing this 13 of 18 because the other cards are part of the thing here. That way you know you're doing the right story. So this is showing that this is going to be 13 of 18 and we're going to see the rest of this deck. And we got the Amalgam. Blind Sense. Two Blind Senses from the Depths. Two from, three from the depths. All right, and then now we're into a new deck, which is part of the other part of that story. And this is 15 of 28 in that story. Esoteric Order of Dagon. Sawbone Alley. Shoreward Slums. The House on Water Street. Innsmouth Jail. New Church Green. Robert Friendly, Zadok Allen, Brian Burnham, Barnabas Marsh, Joyce Little, Othera Gilman, Priest of Dagon. So this is a new set here. You can see it's a list of enemies. So we got the priest, priest, there's one of four, Priest of Dagon, Initiate of Dagon, Initiate of Dagon, and Initiate of Dagon. And then we're into a new four. We have the, yeah, I'm going to butcher that one, the Loigar, Logar, Loigar, Yogar, Psychic Pool, Psychic Pool, and Psychic Pool. Then we have a new batch. Starts off one of six with Deep One Bull. Lurking Deep One, so this be the Deep Ones here. Lurking Deep One. These are the Creatures of the Deep, actually. Figured out I should just look at the thing here. Lurking Deep One. Deep One Assault. And Deep One Assault. And then this one is the Rising Tide, one of six. And we have Undertow. Undertow. Rising Tides, Rising Tides, Riptide, and Riptide. And then the next one is Fog Over Innsmouth. There's three cards for it. We got the Winged One, Fog Over Innsmouth, and Fog Over Innsmouth. And then this next batch is the Shattered Memories. We have the Macabre Memento, 
I'm sorry, there's six in this. There's two of them. Fractured Consciousness and Memory of Oblivion. Next batch is part of the Malfunction. There's two of them apparently. There's a Malfunction and a Malfunction. Which, Malfunction batch, Malfunction. Makes sense. And then this next batch is the, uh, yeah, I, yeah. S-Y-Z, Y-G-Y, Syzygy. Syzygy. I'm gonna go with Syzygy. So final answer, Syzygy. There's four for that batch. We got title alignment. The Syzygy. And the Syzygy. And then this batch is the locals. We have Ends Mouth Troublemaker. There's six in this one. Two. Ends Mouth Look. And Furtive Locals. All right. Now we're gonna look at these cards. These should be, yeah. By going by the backs, those are all the like bad guy cards and stuff that go into the treachery, into the decks and stuff like that. These are gonna be cards that are your, that will go into your personal uh, investigators decks and whatnot. So these are gonna probably start out as people's bad things like Sister Mary's deck only. She's got a guardian angel. And then she had her treachery that she could hit that's in her deck is Crisis of Faith. And then we have Obscure Studies for Amanda Sharp. And her weakness is Whispers from the Deep. And then for Trisha Scar Trish Scarborough, we have In the Shadows. And then her weakness is Shadow Agents. And then Dexter Drake, we have a Showmanship. With his weakness being Occult Scraps. And then for Silas Marsh, we have sea, sea Change Harpoon and Silas's Net, so he gets two things, but his weakness is a Treachery Siren Call. And then we have some Guardian cards, Book of Psalms, which there are two of. We have Blessed Blade, which there are two of. Rite of Sanctification, which there are two of. Hand of Fate, which there are two of. Cryptographic Cipher, which there are two of. Cryptic Grimoire, which there are two of. Deep Knowledge, which there are two of. Plan of Action, two of them. So I'm sending you to two of each. 25 Automatic, Dark Ritual, Obfuscation, Faustian Bargain, or Faustian Bargain, Sword Cane, Tides of Fate, Ward of Radiance, Promise of Power, Token of Faith, Keep Faith, Predestinate, predestined, sorry. Beloved. Tempt fate. And then we got some new basic weaknesses like cursed follower. Dread curse. Day of reckoning. We have Thomas Dawson here and Alina Harper. All right, we'll mix these in, get a feel for it into the game. There should be some other decks coming out to continue this story. All in all, look pretty interesting. Thank you for watching. I hope you got to see what you were looking for here. So thank you for watching and have a great day.